Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a Raspberry Pi and a Raspberry Pi Pico together. This will use features of each, including the analog to digital converter on the Pico and the graphical interface of the Raspberry Pi to create a simple voltmeter. This is going to be different than I originally planned. I was hoping to use I squared C or possibly SPI to communicate between the two, but I ended up using UART serial instead. That's not a problem with this example, but I'll explain the reason for that in the video. I hope to look at the other protocols in a future video. I've created two versions of the code on the Pico, one in MicroPython and one in C stroke C++ as a bit of a comparison. I'll explain the reason I decided to use the UART first and an explanation of some of the issues I had trying to use the other protocols. I'll also explain some of the setup needed for MicroPython and C. If you're just interested in the practical side, then look for chapters on the timeline or in the description to jump to the relevant section. I've already created another video comparing the features of the Raspberry Pi and the Pico. In that video, I said there are advantages of using both together, and this will show one example where this is the case. It's not the only way of achieving this, and arguably there are other components that would be better suited but this does provide a good demonstration of how the two can work together. Like most microcontrollers, it's possible to program the Raspberry Pi Pico in C and C++. But it also supports MicroPython, which is a version of Python specifically for microcontrollers. I think the inclusion of MicroPython is going to make microcontrollers much more accessible to those that don't want to program in C or aren't quite ready to learn the C language. It's also very useful to be able to use a similar programming language on both the Pi and the Pico, and Python has some advantages when creating graphical applications. On the other hand, C is a very powerful programming language. It can be difficult to master. It was one of the first programming languages I learned, but isn't one I'd normally recommend for beginners to program in. It is very powerful and is sometimes the best choice. Perhaps the most difficult part I encountered with C is the lack of feedback for debugging when my code didn't work. There are some ways to work around that, but I did get there eventually. I'll be showing both MicroPython and C on the Pico. There are a few different serial protocols which can be used for sending information between a computer and a microcontroller. I was hoping to use either I squared C or SPI for communications between the Raspberry Pi and the Pico. I wanted the Raspberry Pi to be the primary controller sending the instructions to the Pico as a secondary device. There is lots of really good documentation on the Pico, and I started by looking at the different protocols and how well they are implemented, or at least documented. Whilst there is good documentation for both I squared C and SPI where the Pico is the primary controller, the documentation does not explain how to use it as a secondary device. It's implemented in hardware, but it appears it's not a standard feature of the MicroPython language. Some boards, such as the Pi board, have specific libraries that do support that but they in a hardware specific way. I was not able to find anything specific for the Pico. Although I've not given up on them, I've decided to stick to something a bit simpler for now, so instead decided to use the UART. The C programming language does sound a bit more promising for I squared C and MicroPython, but that is something I can look into at another time. To set up MicroPython on the Pico, then you first need to download the MicroPython UF2 file and copy that to the Pico. I've covered this in my earlier video, so if you haven't yet created your first MicroPython program, then you can take a look at that video, which will be linked in the description. One thing I found was that the REPL, the Read Evaluate Print Loop, is available on UART0. This means I was not able to use that for the communications, but there are two UARTs on the Pico, and so I used UART1 instead. To use the C programming language, you first need to install the C toolchain. If you're using a Raspberry Pi, the easiest way is to run the script, which installs everything needed. I then created a directory, Pico Projects, inside the Pico directory. I did this outside of the Pico folder at first, but because of the way the libraries are set up, I found it much easier to put that within the Pico folder that is created from the install script. You should copy the pico sdk import.cmake file from the pico examples folder and also copy and modify the cmake lists.txt file. 
You also need your C source code file, which I'll explain once we get into the project. Then, to compile the program, first create a directory called build, cd build, and run cmake double dot, which will run the cmake program. Then make minus j2. I used the j2 option as I'm running on the Raspberry Pi 2, and so this will use two threads for compiling the code. This creates a .uf2 file, which can be copied onto the Pico, and then we'll run. That's the setup out of the way. Now time to explain the project. This will be using the ADC analog to digital converter on the Pico. This converts an analog voltage into a digital signal that we can use in the code. It's a fairly basic ADC inside the Pico, but it's sufficient for a basic voltmeter that we'll use here. It only supports up to 3.3 volts, which is the internal power of the Pico. You can take the 3.3 volts from pin 36. Do not use Vsys or Vbus, which are at 5 volts. The ADC is available as analog 0 to 2 on pins GP26, GP27, GP28, and as analog 4 on an internal temperature sensor inside the Pico. You may have noticed I missed out analog 3, which is connected to GP29 of the microcontroller. That's not available on any of the pins on the Pico. The documentation says it can be used to measure the Vsys voltage, but it gives a much lower voltage, so I expect it needs a different conversion factor. You can still access that from the Pico code, but I've not used it in the GUI due to the potential confusion. Note there is only one ADC on the Pico so it's only possible to use one at a time, although you can switch between each of the different ports, so you could quickly flick through each of the different ports to get the different values. The Raspberry Pi and Pico both work at 3.3 volts, so it's just a case of running the appropriate wires between the two. First, the ground is connected. This goes from physical pin 14 on the Raspberry Pi to physical pin 8 on the Pico. Next, connect the transmit of the Raspberry Pi which is physical pin 8, to pin 7 of the Pico, which is the receive pin. Finally, connect the receive pin of the Raspberry Pi on physical pin 10 to physical pin 6 on the Pico, which is the transmit on the Pico. You will notice that the transmit and receive lines are crossed, so the transmit on one device goes to receive on the other, and vice versa. In this case, I'm going to send messages between the Raspberry Pi and Pico using ASCII text. I want to send the data from the Raspberry Pi to the Pico, specifying which of the ports to monitor, sending 0 for analog input 0 to 4 for analog input 4. Then the Pico responds with the string pin, followed by the pin number, e.g. 0 for analog pin 0. Then the value, followed by a floating point number of the voltage at that pin. Note that these are all sent as ASCII strings, including the pin numbers. I created the code for the Pico first. This allowed me to test the communications using Minicom to monitor the serial connection prior to creating the graphical application. This version is in MicroPython. It's created using the Thunny editor, which can communicate directly with the Pico. You can see that where it's connected down here. The code starts by importing the UART and ADC objects from the machine module then sets up a UART object and some variables for the analog to digital values. These are set to initial values so it doesn't give an error later. The ADC object is for the analog to digital converter. The conversion factor will be used later to convert the digital number to a voltage value. The rest of the code is in the while loop. This reads in a single character from the UART which should be a single digit as an ASCII character. It's in the range 0 to 4 using the ASCII characters. Then it sets that as the pin to monitor, reads in the value, and then writes that out on the UART. As long as MicroPython is installed on the Pico already, you can just run this using the Run button. Or to have it run automatically when the Pico is powered on, save it as a file called main.py onto the Pico. This is the version of code created in C. It's shown here using the Visual 
Studio Code Editor. Unlike the MicroPython code, which just waits on a serial connection, this code is based on interrupts, but that shouldn't make it too difficult to understand. The code starts with the header files needed. Note that these need to be listed in the cmakelists.txt file as well, which is shown here. As well as the standard library, there are header files for the UART, interrupts, analog to digital converter, and the standard input output used for the string handling. Then defines the parameters for the UART along with the pins to use. As you can see here, this is for UART1 as well. This is then the default pin and the conversion factor used to convert the digital reading from the analog to the digital converter into a value between 0 and 3.3 to represent the reference voltage. I'll skip past the interrupt handler for now. I'll come back to that. We'll go to the main function, which is listed here. And this sets up the analog to digital converter first, and then the UART. It starts with a very slow board rate, but then that's set later. And it turns the relevant pins into the appropriate mode for using the UART. And then towards the bottom of the code, this is where the interrupt handler is set up. And it sets it up as a function called on UART RX. I'll come and show you that. And then at the end, it just goes into this while loop that just keeps running. So if we scroll back up to the interrupt handler code, whenever it gets a signal on the UART, then it will run this code. It looks for it being readable and gets that value and stores it in this ch variable. It checks that it's a valid number and if so, then sets the appropriate pin. And then it creates, it, it reads the analog to digital converter using the ADC read and then creates this string, which is the same format as the string as we used before on the MicroPython version. It uses this sprintf command to generate that. And then as long as the UART is writable, it puts that back on the UART to send back to the Raspberry Pi. And every time there's a new instruction comes from the Raspberry Pi, it will run this code. So to compile that, I'll show you how we do it on the command line. So it's in the Pico folder and I've called the folder Pico projects. And then inside that I've created voltmeter and you can see here the CMake files and the voltmeter.c file. And then I created this build directory and run CMake on the previous level and then make. And this will build up and create file that we need is this voltmeter.uf2 file and you just restart the pico in the with the boot select button pressed down so it mounts as a file system and then you can drag this into it now one thing you may notice is that the code on the C version is quite a bit longer than the MicroPython version. In fact, it's over three times longer. So that's one of the disadvantages of using C, but it does give you a lot of control over what you do. 
The Python code for the Raspberry Pi is written for Pi Game Zero. I'm showing it here in the Mu editor as this has a Pi Game Zero mode, which makes it easy to create Pi Game Zero code. As you can see, it's in mode Pi Game Zero. So, first, the code imports some modules the serial time and the math floor uh, method, which we'll be using later. Uh, it sets the screen dimensions, and this will put it into the, the GUI mode. Sets up a serial connection. It sets up an actor, which is a image of the Pico. And then creates some variables for storing the, the pin that we're showing and the voltage. And then it creates more actors representing each of the pins and they'll show as enabled, uh, which is a green circle, or disabled, which is a red circle. And you'll notice that I haven't used the one that says GP29. Um, I've put that off the screen, so you can't see it. Um, but it's there if you want to add it yourself later, just move it to another position. Uh, there's some variables here to add a delay in how quickly we send commands. I'll show that a bit later. So the draw function here basically is going to draw the screen. Clear the screen, gives it a color, draws the Pico image and the pin images, and then writes some text. Uh, for the text, you'll see that I've used segment 7 standard as a font, which is a, a font I've downloaded. This for the dot for the decimal point uses a whole character, which just didn't work. So what I've done is I've split the value that I get into a whole number part, which is this one here, which is first displayed and then the fraction part, which is displayed afterwards, and they overlap so that the, there isn't a big gap between them. And then the uh, update function is used to send the commands to and from the Pico and to interpret those. Uh, in Pygame0, then, the update function and the draw function is called roughly about every 60 times per second. And if you tried to send a command to the Raspberry Pi every 60 seconds, then that's going to be uh, putting a lot of load on it. But more so, it's, you're not going to be able to see the value as it's displayed on the screen because that value is going to be changing far too quickly. So. This is just to slow it down, so it's just a little counter that slows it down so uh, only so that this the rest of the code basically only runs twice a second, so uh, a lot slower than it would run otherwise. It sends a signal, a value to the Pico, um, which is the digit of the pin, the analog pin. It sends it as an ASCII character. So this 48 is the uh, ASCII number for the zero character. So it adds that. And although we're only sending one byte here, the serial write command needs this byte order to be included. So it's just included. But as it's only one byte, it doesn't matter. And that's that's whether it sends the most significant part or the least significant part first. Then read the response back from the Pico, uh, decode that, and then set the, the voltage based on the value that we get back. It looks for, uh, splits the string up into the relevant parts. And then that voltage is what the draw function used to 
write the value to the screen. And then finally we've got this on mouse down function which is used when the mouse button is pressed down and this is used to select the appropriate pin. So if you click on one of the pin images, uses collide point if it collides, when the button is pressed down then it sets that one as the one that's enabled. You can now see the program working. By clicking on the different pins they will be able to show the voltage at those pins. I've created analog 0 to 0 volts, analog 2 to the 3.3 volt rail, and then analog 1 is connected to the potentiometer. So you can see the value change as I adjust the dial. If I turn it anti-clockwise, then the voltage will reduce. If I turn it clockwise, then the voltage will increase. There are lots of opportunities for improving the code. One possible improvement would be to add a voltage divider using resistors between the signal and the input of the Pico. This could be used to increase the maximum voltage you're able to measure. If you do use this, then you need to ensure you don't put more than 3.3 volts into the Pico, as that could damage it. You will also need to change the conversion factor used in the code to display the correct value. Another thing you may want to change is that the temperature ADC value still shows the value as a voltage. That could be changed to a temperature instead. Last, but certainly not least, it could do with some better error handling. Pico code isn't too bad in that it will just ignore any unexpected values. However, the Raspberry Pi code could do with some better error handling, as if the Pico isn't connected or it gives an unknown value, then it will cause an error and cause the, system, the program to crash. So that's something you may want to have a go at. If you do create any improvements to the code, then please share them and let us know in the comments. That's this project finished for now. This has shown how to create MicroPython and C code for the Pico, which includes how to measure a voltage using the built-in analog to digital converter. It's also covered how to transfer data to and from a Pico using the UART, and then how to display that data on a GUI using Pygame Zero. I hope you found this useful. I'm planning to create some more projects using the Raspberry Pi, the Pico, and other microcontrollers in the future. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so and click on the bell icon to get notified of the videos when I upload them. I hope to see you again on a future video.